What's up, everybody? It's time for our next lesson, Friday lesson. Uh, we'll do half of this lesson today, and then on Wednesday, we'll pick up and start getting a little bit more mathy. Okay. Uh, so we're talking about hydraulics and. Uh, that word. What is, how do you say that word? Pneumatic. I know the last part is matics. So the actual way to say it is pneumatics. Drop the P because the English language is very confusing. So hydraulics and pneumatics. So if you look right there, that's the slide you should be on in your, your unit binder. Okay. Uh, We'll be working on this one before Wednesday, and then after Wednesday, uh, we'll get into this one, and uh, we'll have a, a little quiz on Socrata, but more so just practice questions, okay? Um, if you go to the Google Classroom, there is a slide that you can add right after this slide, okay? But you don't have to do that this week. Uh, we'll talk about that next week, all right? So let's slide back to this slide. So keep your eye on this slide during uh, the lesson and uh, go ahead and take some notes, okay? Because we are talking about hydraulics and pneumatics. Three, two, one. Roll the video. Have you ever seen this device before? So this is a device used by firefighters. But let me know in the chat what this device is called. So as you can see, they're using it as cutters, they're using it as wideners, as splitters. Watch this, ready? Look at the mass power here. I was watching a live rescue on A&E and a car flipped over and the lady was just sitting there uh, still in her seatbelt upside down and a uh, firefighter was talking to her like a normal day and then they started doing this, what you're seeing him do. And he said, very calmly, he said, all right, ma'am, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, stabilize your car and then we're gonna turn it into a convertible and then take you out. So this is a, I won't say an everyday thing for firefighters, but this is a regular tool that they use. And uh, I think I've seen it by now in the chat. It's called the Jaws of Life. And uh, this is a crazy powerful tool that, um, that the firefighters can use to pry open doors, that they can use to cut the, the steel beams that are designed not to break if you get in a massive accident. Um, so they can cut, choop, 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 take off uh, the whole ceiling of a car top of a car in uh less than 15 minutes i think is what he said uh so <clears throat> that's the jaws of life in action we'll take a little look at that uh later in this lesson uh but we're going to be getting into terms like pressure volume uh we're going to look in a couple of lessons more so at temperature uh, but we're going to look at compression and all that kind of stuff in this lesson are you ready let's go Make sure that no uh, other video starts playing in the background. Here we go. Write this down, compressibility. Okay, you should be taking notes on the slide, lecture notes, or lesson notes, okay? The compressibility of a substance is a measure of its ability to be squeezed into a smaller space or to a smaller volume. Okay, write that down, write that down. Okay, the compressibility, okay, so the ability to be compressed into a smaller space. We're going to look a lot, look into this a lot this week, okay? All right, I know some of you are like, wait! All right, so here we go. 
three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. We've looked a lot at these this year. We've looked at their particles in motion. We in the classroom reenacted this by, by smushing you guys together and, uh, and then giving you more and more space to, to replicate solids being, their particles being smushed together, liquids being kind of tight, but not that tight, and then gas being like all over the place. And uh, what we want to look at is the compressibility of these states of matter, okay? And so to do that, reach into my bag of tricks and pull out a syringe, okay? Now, syringes are used for many different purposes. What you most likely know them to be used for is medical use, okay? This is not a medical use one, uh, but it would look the exact same, okay? And it's made up of two parts. Whoop. It's dripping water. Okay, we've got the okay the actual part where the volume, the space. Okay, and then you've got the plunger. There we go. Okay, you'll see the plunger at the end has this rubber top. Okay. And so you'll see these markings, the lines on there for measuring the substances, okay? And we are, we're going to use these a lot for the rest of the unit, but not sure. You'll notice this one's like all mashed up and because uh, what I do is I give these up to students and they hot glue them and put them onto projects and they make stuff with them. So uh, if we get back at the end of June, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and try this out, okay? So. Let's look at the compressibility using a plunger or using a syringe, okay? So I'm gonna use a solid, all right? Reach into my Lego and I stack some blocks together. So I'm going to open up my syringe. I'm going to place it in. And I'm going to close it. So let's actually go to a full screen mode here. Boom. Okay, so right now I can I can bring the plunger down. Okay. And I'll bring it right down to it's about the 40 milliliter line. Okay. And that's where the solid starts. So the question is, let me know in the chat, how far do you think I can push this plunger down? Okay, let me know in the chat. How far do you think I can push this plunger down? Let me mark it while you put your guesses in. Reminder that I am extremely strong. I'm one of the strongest teachers you've ever had this year for math and science. So take that into account. I am mad strong. Okay, super strength, baby. And what I'm doing here is just marking where the plunger is so that once I crush this Lego, you can be like, wow, look how far it went. All right, so here we go. Turn this so that you can see the, the mark. Here we go. Three, two, one. It went a little bit. It went a little bit. How much compressibility was there? I'm going to go with pretty much none. The amount of movement I got was the rubber squishing against that Lego piece. Okay? It wasn't actually me compressing or squishing these Lego blocks. And you knew this. I just tried to deceive you, right? You cannot compress, you cannot squeeze, you cannot squish these solid state Lego blocks, okay? You can break them apart and then push them together, 
but you're not going to squish them like Play-Doh, okay? The solids are not compressible. They don't have any compressibility. Are we cool with that? Okay, write that in. Okay, we said that solids have almost no compressibility. So uh, I'll go ahead and bring this back up. The next thing I want to do is pull out some liquid. So what I did was I just put water and I got some food coloring and I just put a couple drops of food coloring in there and the only reason that that was for um, your ability to see it. Okay. So I'm just going to stir it around. Okay, so otherwise clear, this wouldn't be as easy to see. So I'm going to put the plunger in. Okay, and I'm going to fill it with water. And the way you do that is you put, submerse it completely into the water. And then you pull up on the plunger. And you remember that line I drew earlier? I'm going to fill it exactly to that line. Okay, so that we just have consistent consistency. The nice thing about a, a syringe is that once it's full, the, the liquid stays in there. Okay, we can talk about pressure and why that all happens and occurs later. But for now, there we go. So, if at this point I press on the plunger, okay, the water will come out and go all over my table and all over my computer desk. So I need to get my towel ready in case I make a mistake. I know you're thinking, Mr. Dab, you don't make mistakes. You're right, I don't. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thumb over the opening. This would uh, stop it, prevent it from escaping. Okay, and we're going to look at the compressibility of water or a liquid or a fluid. Ready? Did you put your predictions in the chat? How far do you think I'm going to be able to push this plunger? Okay, remember with solids, it was almost no compressibility. So now I'm going with water, with a liquid, a fluid. Okay, and what is the compressibility? Is it gonna be high, low, medium? You call it right now, ready? Here we go, three, two, one. <laughs> I got this. <clears throat> Give me a sec. <sighs> I think I broke it. So, if you haven't been able to figure out, still very, very little compressibility. Okay. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Now, if you're like me, you probably, your, hypoth your hypothesis was that liquid had to have a medium amount of compressibility, okay? But in fact, with fluids, there's still almost no compressibility, okay? No matter how hard I tried, and remember, I am mad powerful, I am mad strong, okay? so. Tell them, Amika. Tell them in the chat how strong I am. Okay, so this is so you can understand that fluids have almost no compressibility. Okay, when they're enclosed and they're captured, you say, Mr. Staff, I can squish it. But what you're doing is you're pushing the water away when you put your hand in water. Okay, so what I've done is I've captured this fluid and I've tried to squish it or compress it into a smaller volume by bringing this plunger down, and it's not happening. Okay. So write that in your notes, that solids have almost no compressibility, fluids have almost no compressibility. Okay, our third test 
is going to be of a gas. So what gas do you think I should use? Well, none of those gases that you're thinking of I have. The only one I have is air, okay? And so all I'm gonna do is fill this plunger now by sucking in air. I've almost lost my, uh, my mark. So let me re uh, readjust, put it in. Okay. So let me know in the chat, how much compressibility do you think air will have or gas? Okay. Consider it's particles. Consider what you're seeing on the slide. Okay. Consider what you saw with the solids and the liquids. Consider everything. There we go. All right. Testing the compressibility of gas. Just air in there now in three, two, one. <sighs> Told you a strong. Ah. What can you say about the compressibility of gas? Could you say almost no, a bit, or quite a bit? Okay. Remember, I am super, super strong, so this is quite impressive what I'm doing. Okay. So let's. Get out of full screen mode, and my hand like hurts so much from pushing. Okay, we can say that gas has high compressibility. Okay, we'll talk about that and the uh, implications of that in a bit. All right, so here's a, a little animation of what I did. Okay, the showing the compressibility that solids, liquids didn't move very much and gas was able to move. Okay, so we can create systems that use compressed fluids and compressed gases. Okay, so these are really important words. Uh, hydraulic systems and pneumatic systems. I know you're sitting at home and making sure no one's watching. Go ahead and, and say the word pneumatic. Okay, say it to yourself, pneumatic, pneumatic, okay? Hydraulic and pneumatic, All right? So what is the difference? You, you mostly hear about hydraulic and you don't know, normally hear about pneumatic. Well, hydraulic systems and pneumatic systems both use a similar technology that include <laughs> syringes or in in proper systems, they call them uh, pistons, okay? And then some form of tubing that can connect that syringe, okay, to something else, okay? The difference between a pneumatic and a hydraulic system is what is in the chamber, okay? So a hydraulic, the chamber and the tubes are filled with liquids, whereas pneumatic systems are filled with gases. Why does that matter? Why is that important? The reason is because compressibility. Okay, you just saw on the last slide and on my demo that gases have compressibility and hydraulics are not compressible. Okay, so that will be important depending on what you're trying to do and what your system is trying to be used for. Okay. I think you had enough time to write this down. So here's a quick look at what is a hydraulic? Think about what's the first thing that comes to mind. Let me know in the chat of hydraulic. You've heard of hydraulics before. Uh, you ever heard of those cars that that are on hydraulics and they're they go and then some people can make their cars bounce like. Maybe if you haven't heard of it, it's a really bad example. I apologize. Um, but 
People do put hydraulics on their cars, and we'll look at that in a little bit. Uh, here's another example of hydraulics. This is a very irresponsible example. You never try this at home, kids. Okay, but this digger, as my, my daughter calls it, digger, All right? Um, they use hydraulics, and I'll, I'll kind of demo that in a second uh, in some uh, details. And a pneumatic system, okay, uh, you see this in the doctors. I, I don't really like this. Um, it hurts. This is a blood pressure cuff. And so what they do is they put a cuff around you that's like a, uh, a pillow that can inflate, right? And then they use that little... And they fill up, they push gas into your, uh, into the sleeve, and then it, it inflates, and it cuts off the circulation in your arm, okay? And then what the doctor does, he puts a stethoscope on, and he listens, uh, and as he releases the gas, uh, he's able to hear when your heart, uh, your, your heart is able to start pumping blood through uh, those veins and those arteries again. Uh, it's pretty quite cool. Hopefully in high school you get to try it out a little bit. Um, if we were at school, I'd bring my stethoscope and I'd let you, uh, I don't know, I'd let you try it I'm safe in a safe way though, okay? So uh, this is obviously a silly example, uh, a goofy uh, gif, but here, here they are in motion, okay? Now, hydraulics are used quite a bit all over the place. Um, pneumatics are a bit harder to find. Um, an example that I have, dig into Everly's toy box here. Um, airlines use, uh, and aircrafts use a lot of pneumatic systems. Uh, so one thing that they do do is as they fly, okay, at altitude, their, their actual airplane starts to freeze because it's mad cold up there. Okay, and there's moisture, and so the wings actually will get uh, like frost and, and ice built up on them. Okay, and as they're flying, they have things, they have flaps that go. So as they're flying to control different flight, um, well, things to keep from crashing. So one of the things they use is a pneumatic uh, system, which in the in the belly of the plane right there's all these pistons and and tanks and stuff and they have tubing that flows from the cockpit to those to the underbelly and then to the wings okay and as they as they are building up ice they're able to release and use their pneumatic system to release like de-icer to, to get rid of that ice so that it'd be weird if in the middle of a flight, somebody walked up on there and started axing off the ice. It's just, it wouldn't happen. He would die. He would be gone. So not possible. Okay. So they'll use pneumatic systems in flight. Okay. Uh, they use it quite a bit and all over the place. Uh, a lot of engines, you'll, you'll find pneumatic uses of gas under pressure. Okay. Uh, but what I want to show you through the magic of television, hopefully, is I want to show you a video game, uh, uh, an app that I've been playing with on my phone. Now, some of you might think this is cool, and some of you think you know, think that I'm a, a bit of a nerd. Eh, that's okay. Oh, please work. It's not working. Mm 
some zoom shit. Oh, the lag is real. Of course, right? Because it worked perfectly in my rehearsal. And now it's, it's failing me. All right. So this is an app that I, I've been playing. It's called Construction Simulator 3. And all over a construction site, you're going to find hydraulics. OK? Uh, so right here on this dump truck is a hydraulic piston. OK? And I think it's not working again. Oh, man. All right. Well, uh, they use hydraulics quite a bit. Um, and the reason why is because hydraulics can, with a small effort, can actually make larger um, movements. So here you see a liquid under pressure. You see this hydraulic. If you were to try to lift this much dirt with your shovel, you wouldn't be able to do it. It would be impossible. Okay, we're just not strong enough. And even if you use this machine and you lifted the machine, you're not strong enough to do it. Okay, but with the use of hydraulics, okay, you can you can get deep into that soil, and you can uh, move some incredible things. What we started off the lesson with was uh, the jaws of life. That was um, that was a hydraulic system in which they're able to snap cars like a twig, okay? You would never, ever, ever be able to do that with a pair of scissors, okay? Or even with a saw, you wouldn't be able to do it. You would need this jaws of life to, to get that multiplying force of um, hydraulics. So, What I'm going to ask you to do is go ahead and uh, access these videos, okay? bit.ly slash stavsci hydro1 and hydro2. I want you to watch those videos and try to fill out these as best you can, okay? And on Wednesday, we're going to look at this concept of Pascal's law. Okay, uh, so watch these videos, fill in what you can, learn what you can. Okay, uh, just give me a sec. All right. Uh, hold on, I just got to make sure my recording is working. And it is. Uh, this next part is called Pascal's Law. Okay? And Pascal's Law, you need to know this. This is important for the test. Okay? So, Pascal's Law states that a force applied to a fluid is distributed equally in all directions. Okay? So, let me put this back here. Okay, talking about Pascal's law, that when I push this cork, okay, when I push down on this cork, it's going to apply pressure on the water in this little jar, in this beaker, okay? Now, that's a downward force, right? Here's a marker, and if I push down on the marker, you'll notice that the marker also goes down because the force is only going downwards. You'll notice that when I press down, it doesn't go left. And when I press down, it doesn't go right. And when I press down, it doesn't go up. 
Okay? That's a solid. But when a fluid, when we apply a pressure on a fluid, fluids go in all directions. So you put that pressure in, and it applies it in all directions. So check out my, uh, my diagram here. Okay? So we have the downward force. Okay, and now the force is going to be equally distributed against the, the walls of the jar in all directions. Okay. So when I apply that, applied that force, on the syringe, it's trying to escape out of the, the hole, but when it can't, it's pushing against all parts equally. And actually, because this is an older syringe, when I was pushing it really, really hard, I actually made a, a bit of a, a space uh, in this, this rubber, and some leaked out this way, because the pressure is equally pushing up to the top, as well as to the sides, as well as back down okay that's the way fluids do and pascal's law says that a, a force applied to a fluid pushes equally in every direction not just in that one direction one direction who loves that band let me know in the chat if you love that band okay so i don't know how this next part is gonna go but i'm gonna pull out my towel again Get everything covered. Okay, so if I have a balloon and I and I press on it, right? Right now there's gas in it. So gas is similar to a fluid, right? Now I don't know how this next part's gonna go. Usually I do this in the classroom over a sink. All right. Let's go to full screen here. And wish me luck. This could go very bad. Very, very, very bad. Use my funnel, my water bottle. All right, so <laughs> that's not going to work without my tap. So, my compromise here is to try and force some water into this balloon. Okay, now when I force water into this balloon, I'm going to be applying a force. Now, if I had a hole in the balloon here, get rid of all my markers. If I had a hole in the balloon right here, would water come out here? Okay, at the top. Yes. If I put a hole at the bottom, would water come out the bottom? Yes. What about on the side? Okay, what about on this side? Okay, well, so what, what that concept is, is something that you're familiar with. Okay. It's no surprise to you. Uh, hopefully this works. I'm going to put little holes in this balloon. All around. Let's see if this will work. Okay, so immediately you're seeing water starting to come out of 
the bottom hole. And if I squeeze it, uh, easy to get a better view. I can't can't do that without getting my equipment wet. This might be a fail. <laughs> I gotta hold this. There it goes. Can you see it squirting out? So as I apply a downward force into this balloon, it's not just shooting out the bottom hole, but Pasco's law states that it's going to apply the pressure in all directions. And that's why we can see water coming out of the top, the side, the side, and it's all at the same, like, pressure, the same speed that it's coming out. Because fluids don't just, this downward force, it, won't, it doesn't just push out only the bottom. It pushes equally out of all the sides, against all the sides of the balloon. I put this up here, maybe you have a better view. It's a darker backdrop. One more time. Usually what I'll do is I'll put the balloon on the sink, uh, on the actual faucet, like on the, and I'll just let the water run and it just looks cool in the classroom. Okay, so this is Pascal's Law. And maybe that was the worst demonstration I've done for online learning. But that's science. That happens. Not everything's a great success. Let me know in the chat if it wasn't as bad as I think it is. I know Aris is probably there saying, it was bad, Mr. Staff. It was really bad. Thanks, Aris. Thanks a lot. All right. All right, so when the thumb puts pressure or as my uh, syringe put pressure on the balloon, it came out of all the holes with the same amount of force. Okay, so this shows us that pressure that, that is being put into the balloon is distributed equally throughout the water, throughout the fluid. Okay, this is, a, excuse me, this is an important concept to remember as you go uh, through the rest of this unit and as you go to the test. You need to know what Pascal's law. Don't get it confused with Archimedes' principle. Okay, Archimedes' principle is the whole water displacement to measure buoyancy. Pascal's law is just the principle, the fact that fluid goes applies its pressure evenly in all directions. Okay. Uh, if if I was to try and uh, push, I don't know, like. If I was to push snow, it, it's going to take the force that I'm applying to it and just move forward. Okay? But if I was to push, like, water, water would move equally in all directions. Okay? That was probably a bad example. Let's move on. So we're going to talk about how hydraulics are force multipliers. And right here on the screen, you're seeing a small syringe and not just a hand. Okay, remember earlier, you saw me going, mm -hmm. okay, not even that much effort, just the finger, very, I was very intentionally using that picture, okay, pushing very gently on a syringe, 
And the result is, I guess you can see on that side. Nope, on that side. Okay, on the very far side, you'll see the rock on the bigger syringe. And you'll see that the big syringe is empty and the little syringe is full. Now, this is some of my higher level PowerPoint uh, animation skills. So as we put, um, we push on a small plunger, okay, it's going to be applying pressure, okay? Now, Pascal's law states that that fluid is going to be pushing that pressure in all directions, okay? But the syringe and the tubing channels and, and directs that energy. So, if I push down, I actually can change the direction of the receiving Syringe. So that a sideways force creates an upward movement. This downward produces an upward. Downward equals downward. Downward force equals upward force. Uh, the right force equals a left result. Okay, or we can work in the same direction. Okay, a hydraulic system allows us to change directions because of Pascal's law. Okay, but also it um, it allows us to be stronger than what we normally would be. Okay, so I could never lift a massive boulder with just a touch of a finger, which is what a construction machine does, right? But with a touch of a finger, you can lift massive massive weights okay so the pressure is going to be distributed through the plunger and that rock goes up oh got my soup can Okay, so we can create movement, we can create systems. So a small force using Pascal's law says that even, even distribution of that force, no matter how much bigger the receiving end is, means that this is going to be lifted. Okay. Now we're going to get in deep about this we're going to talk about the math behind it on wednesday okay we're gonna get specific um but this was just an introduction to pneumatic and hydraulic systems uh super bummed that you weren't able to see my video game but oh well such is life so uh thanks for joining us not a lot of work for you this week okay so enjoy it uh, relax a little bit. Uh, don't get carried away. Make sure some of you are, are not even close to finishing your slides. So use this week to go back and get some of your slides done. Okay, We should be almost done this entire unit. We're pretty close. Okay, we're on this one. Okay. So we're Pascal's Law Calculations. That'll be next week. We're going to talk about pressure, volume, and temperature. And then it would be the culminating task, but we don't have a culminating task, so it's unit test. Okay, so we will be doing the unit test online. All right, so you do need to get your slides done. Don't leave it. It'll be overwhelming uh, to stack it on top of everything else. So this is a good week to catch up on some of those slides. Okay, so uh, thanks for joining us. If you have questions, you can always let me know. Uh, or you can ask your classmates as well. Coolio, peace out. Thanks for joining. And